Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Now, you guys know I love humanity and I oftentimes talk about the many threats that humanity faces. And for some reason, this has drawn a lot of negative attention from my fellow man. I mean, uh, I get labeled a bigot or a racist all the time, especially when I'm talking about those goddamn blue monkeys from Pandora. This has never really bothered me though because you can't always win over everyone, especially the crazies. In every population, there will always be lost causes and human society has always secretly created fads to eliminate them, whether it be hoverboards or toaster grilled cheese. But what does really worry me is when I see comments from other human beings claiming that humans are the most evil or worst species to ever exist. Now this is probably just a spur of the moment emotional response but the underlying thing here is that we're looking at a human who probably hates themselves. The reality is despite all the terrible things mankind has been responsible for in the past, our greatness and potential far outweighs all of them. The fact that we can actually look back at our own history and reflect and learn from that history makes us already better than any other thing on this planet. You think a seal feels remorse when it knocks out a penguin and then mounts it and uses it like a dirty love sock? It doesn't, and that's because it's an animal, and we as humans should not try to give animals human virtue. Just because that animal is doing something a human might do doesn't necessarily make them human. That's just your loneliness and desperation trying to trick you. Now, of course, humans did evolve from animals like chimpanzees, but as our brains became larger and consumed more energy, we also had to give up things like our physical strength and our ability to sense our environment. As a matter of fact, for tens of thousands of years, early men had a lot of problems trying to survive in whatever ecosystem they were in. They were constantly getting killed by predators, disease, and other things. Even if you look at the strongest and largest humans like Dwayne Johnson, who definitely isn't on steroids, he wouldn't stand a chance against an alpha predator like a lion. Usain Bolt, despite being one of the fastest men in the world, can only run at a maximum speed of 27 miles per hour for short periods of time. That's around the same top speed as a polar bear, and definitely slower than cheetahs, which have a top speed of 75 miles per hour. The only physical advantage that humans seem to have is our endurance, so we might not be able to chase something down, but we can follow animals around at a moderate pace for hours until it collapses from exhaustion. And so for most of our history, humans were mainly gatherers and hunters. We were omnivores that basically tried to scrounge up anything we could find. But eventually, humans started learning how to use tools to create weapons to increase how dangerous we were and decrease our exposure to danger. But far more important was our ability to pass on our knowledge to the next generation and so on. That's something an animal really can't do. The only thing that they can pass on is their genetic material. Well, not this seal. You still need to have love to make a baby. So it's really this ability to acquire knowledge over many generations that makes us better than everyone else. The only real change that animals can experience is through evolution, which is random and can take hundreds of thousands of years. If humans only depended on evolution, well, we could probably say that we haven't really changed much since early man first left Africa. You can take a homo sapien from that period of time and raise them in our current society and help them become an astronaut or a president, or better yet, an astronaut president, thanks to just a few thousand years of human civilization and shared passed down knowledge. This is why no other species can stand against the might of humanity. It's like starting a game of Red Alert and having your base already built along with all of your units. This is what every human being born in modern society has access to. This is also why we gotta prevent the dolphins from coming out of the water and doing the same thing. But even more important than our ability to transfer knowledge from one generation to another is our social abilities as a community. You see, back then it wasn't just Homo sapiens roaming around, there were all sorts of other types of early man. You had your Neanderthals. Most Asians and Europeans actually have 2% of their DNA in their bodies. Ron Perlman most likely has even more. You also had the Homo erectus, Homo talpa, Homo lacerta, hobbits. Today, only Homo sapiens roam the surface of the planet. Who knows what's going on beneath the surface of the planet, but for now, just Homo sapiens. And what's strange is, Homo sapiens were definitely not the most physically capable early man around. Neanderthals, for instance, were much stronger than your average Homo sapien. They had larger brains and potentially even better eyesight. So in a cage fight, the average Neanderthal would most likely defeat the average Homo sapien. But the Neanderthals lacked the same type of social skills as we did and lived in smaller groups. 
Now, roughly around 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthals disappeared, and so did many of these other types of early man. We don't really know what exactly happened. We do know that Homo sapiens moved into the Neanderthal territories. Perhaps they were able to outhunt them because their hunting parties were larger, or maybe they just carried out a genocidal war against the Neanderthals. We don't really know. Anthropologist Robin Dunbar estimated that the average Homo sapien could make up to 150 meaningful acquaintances based on their cognitive abilities. This is far more than what a Neanderthal could do. Homo sapiens quickly expanded out of Africa, populated much of Eurasia, and roughly around 45,000 years ago, humans were already braving the freezing cold of the Arctic to hunt the giant woolly mammoth in large groups with spears. Their offspring would eventually head over the land bridge and enter into the Americas somewhere around 30,000 to 16,000 years ago. In those days, evolution rewarded individuals who were willing to take huge risks and explore the unknown for new hunting grounds. Recent attempts to map out the human genome has found that there is a genetic marker known as the adventurer's gene. And I'm sure when the first humans leave our solar system for deep space, they'll be carrying the same genes that the first man who crossed the land bridge to the Americas did. Another thing that really makes humans remarkable is our ability to grasp abstract concepts. Take Social Security, for instance. Formed in the midst of the Great Depression, Social Security is something that most Americans have to pay into. We do this because if we don't, we'll probably get in trouble with the IRS. But more importantly, we also do this because we know that when we get old, we'll be guaranteed a payment. Unless it's just one giant Ponzi scheme. Now imagine going up to a seal and taking a penguin from them every month and telling that seal that they will get a penguin allowance when they're too old to chase them down so that they can use them as love socks. This would never happen. The seal would never agree because it's not capable of complex thought. It would just go back to violating that penguin. Thanks to our ability to believe in abstract ideas, man created language, currency, laws, traditions, and religion. Humanity's ability to get on the same page with one another has led to legendary feats of engineering and art like the pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge, and of course the ice wall that guards Westeros. Humans were able to work together with the same type of coordination you might expect out of a colony of ants, but at the same time, each individual was capable of independent and probably intelligent thought. And as our trading and economic systems became more complex, we started even putting a price on the future. From 1634 to 1637, tulips became such a hot commodity in Holland that investors were buying entire crops of them before they were even planted. This idea of taking your excess resources, giving it to someone else who will pool a lot more excess resources together to achieve some bigger and greater thing, led to an explosion in wealth and creation. As a species, we were able to build amazing things that one single man would have never been able to do. So humans are actually quite amazing, and in the last few hundred years especially, we've really been on a roll. As the world becomes more connected, as more of our basic needs are taken care of, we're able to achieve even greater things. And so our biggest flaw is not our desire to continuously expand and grow. Our biggest flaw is the fact that our bodies, minds, and DNA have not adapted to this crazy world we've created around us. We are still the same homo sapiens that were chasing around giant woolly mammoths with spears. Except now we have computers, iPods, cars, planes, bombs, guns to make everything that much easier. But being a hunter and gatherer back then was tough and so we evolved some pretty drastic measures to stay alive. Every time a kill was made, for instance, ancient man would eat as much as he could, just like any other animal that didn't have a stable supply of food. But when we do that now, we go to a churrascaria and we eat five pounds of meat. It's completely unnecessary and also delicious, but also very unhealthy, especially if you work in an office and sit on your ass all day. It's the same reason we love sugary drinks and 64 ounce sodas. Our bodies and our brains crave all that sugar and nutrition. So despite all of the crazy advances that we've made, we still are completely beholden to our body's chemistry. And a lot of the structures we create in society are there to counteract these instinctive impulses that we have, but we're not exactly quite there yet at creating a perfect human society. But that's okay because our collective history of tens of thousands of years of development is what makes us a great species. And the longer we continue refining that formula, the better it gets. Now there is something else I wanna talk about, which is uh, you know future first contact scenarios with aliens. I typically say we should probably exterminate or kill any aliens we encounter. And that really does piss off uh, certain individuals in the comments section who seem to wanna go out of their way to defend aliens. Uh, James Cameron is one of them. 
You know, this is another really odd aspect of human nature. I mean, we were talking about how we like to push our own qualities onto other things like animals, because maybe that will help us understand them better. But it's actually really dangerous to do this because it's not very scientific or truthful, and uh, it's even more dangerous when you're applying this to alien species from another world. The same people who get angry when I say we should exterminate aliens probably would be open to embracing any form of life we encounter in the future. And that's because they're assuming that there's some kind of universal moral code and understanding that will allow us to somehow get along with any life forms we face in the future. This is a very arrogant way of looking at the universe. There are infinite ways for life to form in the galaxy and probably even more ways for that life to develop into an advanced civilization that can make contact with us. Everything we take for granted in human society, like our shared moral code, our monetary system and laws, are things unique to humans. They've been formed thanks to our genetics and our experiences. So it's really not a good idea to just assume any uh, future alien species we encounter is just gonna be peaceful. I mean, they might not even be carbon-based or uh, be from the same part of the galaxy we're in. They might not even be able to communicate with us. So we always have to be vigilant and put humanity first. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. My name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.